I know it's not good to inhale any of the fumes from contact cement and other solvents, but I actually kind of like the smell of it. I like the smell of gasoline too. And while we're sharing, I like to sip on soy sauce. Oh, and, and sesame oil too. I like to drink a little sesame oil. Ooh, a freshly painted room. There's another smell I like. Maybe the fumes are getting to me. That was a scene I cut out of last week's video and you're welcome. Welcome to More Minutes. This is a follow-up to last Friday's video, my recessed cabinet in the bathroom. If you haven't seen that video yet, please check it out. RX Mixer wants to know why I didn't use the decorative squares that I used on the main mirror on this cabinet. That was something I had to give some consideration to. I think a lot of times good design has to do with repeating elements, but not too much. In this case, I thought that just putting those squares on the cabinet might be overkill. It was just one of those gut feeling judgment calls. Derek and a few others wanted to know more about how I polish aluminum. It really takes a lot of work to get this aluminum sanded back up to a medium satin finish. And the reason why I sand it to begin with is to remove all of the scratches and milling marks that are on it. I, I sand that using 220 grit sandpaper on my random orbit sander. And that gets it down to a real matte finish, but to get it back shiny again, I am gonna work my way up into higher and higher grit sandpapers. Right now, I'm on a 600 grit sandpaper. And it's super messy. Finally, I switch to one of these scrubbing pads and just buff it. Another option is to use rubbing compound and an automotive buffer. I've heard that works pretty well too and you'll see the shine start to appear. What I didn't show in that deleted scene was finishing it with a little bit of this Mr. Metal. I'm sure there's other brands of metal polish, but it's really easy to just pour this on and buff it out and it gives it a nice shiny look. And Rat Dog wanted to know if I used any kind of sealer on the aluminum. I didn't use any sealer on this project or the mirror, although you can spray lacquer over it. I probably should have sprayed lacquer on it. We'll see what happens over time. If it starts to tarnish a bit, I can always polish it back up and then put lacquer on it at that time. I went to a local glass shop yesterday and ordered the two shelves and I was gonna pick them up this morning and just now as I put this mirror in here I happen to think I didn't account for the thickness of that mirror which is a quarter inch so I just called the glass shop they've already cut the pieces but they're gonna cut down a little bit more so that they'll fit here and I can pick them up this afternoon it's really nice of them to do that they're not gonna charge me any extra each shelf is only costing ten dollars I think that's pretty reasonable when I started this bathroom remodel there was an old ugly medicine cabinet here which I pulled out of the wall so I didn't have to cut this hole but cutting out a hole in drywall is easy enough you just cut it between the two studs and don't cut into a stud unless it's on a non load bearing wall like this one is that just separates the hallway from the bathroom. A recurring comment I've been getting on my bathroom remodel videos asks why I chose to use a dark brown paint on the cabinets in such a small room. It'll make the bathroom look smaller. So I thought it would be interesting to explore this a bit further and see what you think. There are a couple issues here. First of all, the question implies that I want the bathroom to look larger. Maybe this is a, a cultural thing that somehow we assume bigger things are better. Ask almost anyone who's gonna paint a room and they'll reflexively tell you that you need to use light colors to make the room appear bigger and add mirrors, lots of mirrors. Why do we wanna delude ourselves into believing a room is larger than it is? Why is this a goal? Where is it written that a bigger room is a better room. In fact, I might argue that a smaller room is more homey and comfortable. From a pragmatic standpoint, I'm not even sure mirrors and light colors really do that much to make a room seem bigger anyway. 
I don't know if this has ever been studied or if it's just a belief we all seem to hold. If you'll remember, the old bathroom had a wall-to-wall -wall mirror. It had white cabinets and bright yellow paint. And to me, the bathroom feels no smaller now. Plus, that huge mirror made the space seem more like a public restroom than a guest bath. From the outset of this remodel, my goal was to embrace the size of the bathroom and play to those assets. Rather than pulling out all the tricks to try to fool people into believing it's larger than it is, make it more intimate and warm by playing with darker shades and throwing in splashes of color. But I wanna hear what you think. Leave a well-considered comment below. Do larger spaces really make us feel any better or are we just conditioned to think this way? Maybe the solution is to design and decorate with less constraint and ask ourselves what moods we wanna create in our spaces rather than worrying about the size. 